both because they they have Nazar on one side, almost 2,400. Lamarcus 1,700. Mipperon 14. <laughs> Getting mod. Yeah, I. I don't. Ah. I don't know you that well, MTE. I don't think you would try to sabotage anything, especially when you're in the tournament and like them. Um. Like we never talk on voice, really. It's it's not me. It's you. <laughs> Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it out there. I know you're hopeful. I guess maybe if Leafman didn't refer you or recommend you that, that kind of hurt your resume, but old refugees on the other side with raid 2k, one of the best flanks in the tournament. Obviously there's a lot of good flanks. He's just one of them. Carnage been playing pocket super well on Palemos. This team is clicking on all cylinders. I still favorite them today, but who knows? And I'm here with Ray. What's up, Ray? It's that's kind of the theme of this tournament too. Is let me get in. I'm at two minutes. I can, you want to count it down? All right. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Wait, you don't hear Ray? Wait, how do you know Ray's? Oh, because I said Ray's here. Duh. Um. Okay, we're going to resync. Wait, are we? So, yeah, something's wrong. I just changed my audio to make it better. What's going on? Oh, that's, I see what's wrong. My Discord thing, I run it now all through, not my desktop audio, but it's not picking you up. That's weird. What's going on here? The banana, the voice, voice meter. Why did it, why did it break? It just worked earlier. I just cast it and it was fine. Um, desktop audio disabled. Okay. Man, um, we'll get it. We'll get it. Okay, I'm just going to try adding the Discord application again. Discord 2. Try talking. Yep, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. now it's working. I don't know why the other one broke. You guys can hear him now, right? Yep, yeah, awesome. Okay. All right, MC. I, it's so weird how things work, and then they don't. Um, Let's see that right. 2.30, I guess. Okay, I can, I'll be there in a sec. Right. All right, you count us down this time. All right, three, two, one. Okay, so back to this map. Why am I drawing a blank on the freaking map? Uh, wow. Oh, Frozen Cove. Frozen, Frozen Cove. Cove. Wow, I just drew the well, fattest blank ever. Dude, we I, I think we gave up calling this map by its actual name. We just say, I think, uh, the inbreed between Baltic and Team Acropolis. Right. Yeah, that, that th I think that's what we refer to it. Because uh, nobody remembers Frozen Cove. Yeah. We're not that creative. We haven't gone to the point where we started syncing it up to one name. But anyway, it's an interesting map. Like, there's definitely, as long as everybody spawns with four deer, 
I don't know if you saw, I guess we only uploaded the wrecks that we, uh, that were successful, but I think it took us a solid four starts or so with, for everybody to spawn with all their deer. Gosh. So we basically had like four or five, or I think like at least four admin rees. Okay. I've had two admin rees myself casting this map. So it is busted. That's kind of annoying. The funny part is, is that like at first, like people were scared and they weren't sure, like maybe I just didn't didn't scout properly, right? But after the like second or third time that it happened in a row, where like it doesn't even matter if you have deer. Like we had hider check from the uh, from the spec screen and make 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 sure that we had permission from the enemy team. But at one point, we just stopped caring. Everybody's like, okay, if it looks like an admin, we were just gonna read. Like eventually, the, this will spawn with all the deer. Anyway, it is an interesting map. Yep. That's funny. You guys were like, okay, we trust the read. No one's trying to abuse yeah. reads at all. Just everyone wants a fair map. At this point, like at some point, you just want the game to start, you know? It's like you've been uh, you've been drafting for an hour uh, and so forth. Right. Anyway, about the game, though. So Nezar went Huns, and as much as I lo love Huns, the one thing that I think is going to be hard for Nezar is getting uh, good walls up in front of his base. Uh, Teal over there. That's a because, good point. No house yeah. walls. So my guess is that they were thinking about going aggressive from the start. Yeah, and he also has the awkward kind of further from his teammate spawn. Not that much further, but he is further. And look at the yeah. yep. Look at the efficiency from Carnage on his uh, lumber camp. As I say this, a villager has to walk all the way around oh. to actually get to it. Gosh, and the next but one. Will... Okay, they're... yeah, it will be good in the long term, though. Yeah, it's got good angles for all of them, for sure. It's almost like two wood lines with one lumber camp. Well, I guess it is two. <laughs> and... Sean says he likes Hans Berbers and Hindusanis. Yeah, perhaps Gurjars, though. I don't know. Gurjars, super camels everywhere running around that really screwed us up, at least. It feels like they're playing it similar. Um, scouts, maybe from both sides. One has the Hindustani bonus, one has Turks, Magyars, maybe one in the middle FCs. I'm not sure yet. Who's the middle? Miparun? He may FC. I think they did that last time, the old refugees. I think this makes sense, but if Miparun is going to wall or start the team wall, this is going to be really hard for Nezar to actually get the all the wall across. Like, how does Nezar even wall this off in a right. reasonable I, way? I think it's why opening Feudal, at least with two players, is good, because it can buy time. Scouts may yeah. still get in, because the other side's probably going Scouts too, seeing all the mills. Although, it's going to be... What is Purple doing? FC? Yeah. Rajara is FC. FC from flank. Interesting. Okay, so we played this quite... We had different ideas in this map comparing to these teams. This was, um, it's interesting that everybody comes to different conclusions on this, on looking at the same map. Right. Everyone thinks differently. I'm a big fan of foot archers, honestly, even though that sounds weird on a map like this. They're just you so know weird. what I'm not a huge fan of, though? Housed, uh, town watch. Because Turks, <laughs> unfortunately, raid, you were hyping raid right up before this, but I believe that that was from him getting housed and having to research emergency town watch. I think you're right. It's not the worst. I, it's not the worst. Map, I mean, I he's afraid of archers. It could help him a lot. It could come into play to help him. Yeah. Uh, probably not at 20 villagers. You probably want to get that when you're housed at 25 instead of 20. Yeah, it's at definitely... least when I plan to get housed, that's usually the, that's, that's, that's the meta. Get housed at 25. Absolutely. So I think 20 is a little bit too early. We'll see if it pays off. Yeah, it we'll see if getting house at 20 pays off. Is that a no loom vill? Purple had no loom and lost the vill. Shoot. Okay. Oh, was that worth it though? I I'm know. not sure if that was worth it. I. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. The, the question is does purple get loom now though? Oh, and the TC runs under, or the, the scout runs under the TC. It's kind of two scouts for a, a vill. Purple does. Okay, get so one. Nezar is actually going archers, which really need requires Nezar to get his full walls up, and I don't think it's gonna happen. This is unfortunate for Nezar. Now he's just getting bullied by the scouts. He won't be able to produce. Tries to save everything the at once. 
This is going to be tough for Nazar with yeah, Raid already in on his base. The walls, they're not sealed yet. That Phil needs to drop more. I got it. It's a combination of being Huns and also this map really sucking for Nezar. Yeah, is he going to quick wall? He might lose another Vil. This is very awkward for Nezar. Wow. This is so bad. This is horrible. Nezar is going to be forever futile. Two Vils down. His wood is getting idled to hell and back. He's going to lose a third Vil. Wow. He's going to lose a third Vil. And he has a minute and 17 seconds of idle TC time because he tried to go for the Archer build. Uh, even though he he does have two on varies, it's just not going to be enough in the early feed production for some time. But let's see if these archers get any compensation. I mean, there are five archers, but I just do not see them doing any damage here. And it's not like Nezar can get a blacksmith up anytime soon, so it's going to be pretty rough for him. I like the approach of the teams that go to the back more. I guess he's forcing a tower. He's killing a gate. Yeah, I mean, force a tower. That's not horrible. I mean, that's as much damage as they would ever get. I'm not even sure if that tower was necessary because they would have to go through all the way through a house. But I suppose Raid does not want to get his wood line denied and have his villagers wall walk all the all the way across the, the map. Right. It's kind of I think I think Raid's approach is pretty good when you consider the fact that he's microing his five scouts in the back of the enemy's team's base. So he wants to be as hands off as possible in front. Which just is make sure he doesn't lose any villagers. Exactly what the tower did. But as I say, hands off. Raid just lamed the hell out of all their all their gold of the gold of uh, of Palamos. Oh man, Palamos going for the cleanup. I think Palamos has enough. I mean, that's that's nine nine scouts to three scouts, right? And a couple of archers. And considering those archers don't have fletching, I think it's even a little bit of a mistake for Palamos to go back here. Yeah, there's no fletching because of probably what happened earlier. He may not even get fletching at this point. Although he probably should with all the scouts behind his base. Yeah, it's just a matter of... Okay, so Palamos was thinking about getting plus one, but I think he's trying to take the fight even before then. I guess he'll wait. At this point, there's no reason. It's not like the archers are going to do any more damage. Yeah, he's going to pounce the second that armor comes in, I assume. And these armies are going to get wiped. Here's the jump. This should be a clean. Yeah, this is uh, this is so horrible for uh, for Lamarcus because uh, he can't he couldn't even run if he wanted to. Occasionally, you you know you have your archer player kind of trapped in there, and or rather have like four archers, and you just say, "Hey, man, I'm sorry, those four archers are gonna die. I'm not gonna lose any scout HP. I'm gonna get the hell out of there." Uh, but I don't think that was even the case because a lot of those scouts felt like they were a little bit cornered in, even if he wanted to leave. Right, man. These. Look at scouts. look at raid scouts coming right back. They, they've been so, so annoying. Yeah, I mean, look at the the top player is the lowest score in the game because of the damage that was done, and he's still being yeah. such a pest. And after all that, vil counts are still equal. I yeah, they are actually. Is there am, I, am I missing something? How do, oh, how did this happen? Two of wheelbarrow. Raid has about a minute idle, two minutes for Palamos. It's the idle time. A little bit more for um, old refugees, who also did lose that one vil. Actually, how come my eco Katie doesn't show them losing a vil, but I know one died earlier. Hmm. No walls in this oh, map. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, two leader. vils. Carnage lost two. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. We, so I think somebody, I think Titanic... Uh, pointed that out, or somebody pointed that out in chat. Oh, okay. It didn't seem as relevant comparing to the rest of the uh, dis like situations that were happening. And look at uh, Raid's wall, actually. The back key is still open, despite this full wall. I swear, a lot of these full walls are just for show. Wait, he has a in, hole? In the, on the right side, there's a hole between... Uh, you see where both of the stones are? The, you see where the stones are? Yeah, it's, it's that I, tip of that palisade me... to the tree, right? I think so. So at least yeah. I have a hole there. But there's a chance I have a mod on that makes that glitched out. But I believe I think that's it's a, hole. a hole. Okay. Definitely I'm not crazy. Like so all that walling could be for nothing. They're going to assume it's walled unless they click in. I'm going to be honest. This worked out way better for uh, Nazar, Kjorin, and uh, Lamarcus than well, I thought I was going to. Look at their military numbers right now. 25 to 6. Yeah. 
Where is all that military? So the archers are completely useless. They finally got fletching though. I mean, they are yeah, he... slightly less useless now. He waited for castle, which I like. I'm yeah. Just delayed it even more otherwise. I can't believe we have to repair from camels, but this is actually and... this actually might go down. I don't the know. Archers, these archers yes. These archers are getting value. Killing one villager, making sure that uh Pulemos is not able to repair. It's always the caster's curse. As soon as you say something use useless, <laughs> it instantly good. three th th about three villager kills from these uh, from these archers from the these feudal archers. Is so paid off now. He's gonna go right into cav archers too behind it. We see three cav archers queued up immediately. I assume he has three ranges too. Yep. Wow. The question is. How does Boom compare to Hindustani Boom? Because not only do does he have all these camels out on the field, I think he's the only one. Well, no, except I, guess, I suppose Carnage has a second and third TC, but it really seems like this could snowball and get out of hand with the camels if there's no if uh, these guys ever break in. And this old refugee team monastery here has seemed so unbeatable almost this tournament, and they're looking very vulnerable right now. At least how this has played out. Mm, they're doing a really good job walling everything out, and as soon as, as long as this gate go, go, comes up before the house, no, no, the villagers open. Judas opens. I guess it's not even Judas because there's three oh, of them. They hold you it. You can't even oh, say that. Oh man, that. Of course they that's hold it. Massive. This is such a game changer. This is ridiculous. Carnage is not happy with what he just did. He's got to be kicking himself. Uh, I was gonna say it's just one uh, one bad villager, but no, that was it. That was a team effort. That was a team <laughs> screw up. Yeah, the gate went down, and it's like for nothing. And this is where you lock. This is why you lock your gates before you build them. Wait, can and you shift do your that? villagers away. You can do that as of a patch, or about as of like six months ago, I believe. What? You can do that. While it's going up, you can yeah, hit the lock crazy. button. Yeah, absolutely. I yep. Did not it, it, it's a pretty new feature. Anyway, so it looks like the camels are gonna get cleaned up, actually. They did make the best of this bad situation. Yeah, lots of idle time for Carnage behind that. But uh, Carnage doesn't care about idle time, because the only reason he has idle time is because he's building his fourth really? TC. He still has 67 villagers to Hindustani's 55. Yeah, and they're ahead on Vils. The military, they're starting to catch back up. It does seem like it looked bad, but it's okay. This is a very even game again. It, really it doesn't is. seem like we're going to have any sort of uh, disaster in Castle Age, at least. I think it's going to take Hindustani or Gurjaras to get it to Imp and get all their upgrades to start uh, really making a issue for others. Yeah, and so, uh, what... yeah. the problem for like the Cab Archer play, they are making Berber Camel Archers, which are great, especially as it goes on. And what were you gonna I am convinced us? whichever team makes Cab Archers is the team that dies. <laughs> But Nazar has uh, surprised me before. Actually, these, I don't think Carnage realized that wasn't completely walled. And the 4th TC gets denied at 90%, 89 and a half. Yeah, he's lost 8 bills now. And he looks like they're just going to beat the TC down. I don't hate it. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's going to, I mean, there's really no point to even delete it at this point. I think Carnage waits till he has enough camels and tells his team to get over there. I think this TC still goes up. Eventually. It's going to be on fire, but TC on fire is still a TC. Yeah, the rotation from Raid, will it be in time? I think it just might be. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be close, actually. Now that the now that it's at 800 HP, they really want to save the TC, I believe. Or, I, oh, let's see, the, team, the teammates uh, might not care as much because they think, Ray, or sorry, Carnage, you already have three TCs. But Carnage more? says, no, let's try to save this. He's going to pop camels out. More camels come forward from green, though. I think they're going to pop these camels and oh. do the jump. No, they they, they had it. They jumped way too late. They were definitely going for the jump, but I think they, it was they, just a little bit too late. Yeah, they needed to know, like, when that thing was that weak, they're going to keep hitting it. So that right, was their right. chance to get some free damage. And, I mean, looking at the army counts, it's not a huge... Not a huge difference. They could have definitely... I, I think they could have popped out early. I think that TC could have been saved. It would have been not very good, but I think it's more for the map control than anything. And Carnage is pissed off now. He says, no, What's you it? guys, I'm building a TC there again. 
I don't care what you guys did. It's like nothing happened. Nothing happened. Yeah, he's mad about it. He's like, no way. I like this the outpost when you, um... on the left from Carnage, too. Oh, yeah. T uh, outpost. Wow, wow, that's a lot of outposts. Yeah, it's going to get a lot of Carnage has been playing this really well. And Castles from Lamarcus, second one coming up on the left. I like that, too. It also really helps secure trade later if it comes to that, because you can't really wall the whole map. Is Do any of these civs get good help, is what I'm thinking. I mean, not really. Huns get full help, right? Yeah, okay, so Huns, and then I, I think Magyar is good. Yeah, Magyars. Like, mostly help. Like, will it. we ever see them? Or will this be a game where we don't see a single halb and it's just going to be camels and cow archers the whole time? These are two very well-matched teams, though. I keep looking at the Vils and the military. It's, like, within 10 at all times. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, Check Rider uh, points out that uh, Blue's been actually... Very small idle time compared to everybody else being very effective with it, even though he's three TCs and a little bit later than some of the other players. Yeah, and someone and it's fine. jinxed it right when someone. Well, compliments. you jinxed it. You didn't jinx it. And here's why I don't think you jinxed it because he was getting for thumb ring. And right now, with uh, 17 uh, camel archers on the field, uh, thumb ring is more important than getting two vills out, you know? Right. So, I mean, you might have jinxed it, but it was for a good, for a good reason. <laughs> I like this. These guys the right from raid to they're securing. One oh, one. yeah, absolutely. Getting so much more map. I'm just looking at the map. I mean, it's pretty even. It's just a matter of Nezar's villagers over there in the top in the top of the map are really exposed. And there's really nothing protecting them except for those two spearmen that are basically a, oh. an outpost that walks. Big fight in the middle. Huge. Fight. It looks like it's going to be all in. They're just going to patrol it until uh, till something goes down. So these Shravapsha Riders are taking a lot of shots. And Old Refugees have to fall back enough. to the hill. Yeah. I don't they, think the hill is going to be enough even. They just push right up it. I think these Camel Archers don't yeah. give a crap. They hurt so much. Oh, this this gate that never made it up? Or this, this wall piece next to the gate is actually going to be crucial a second time, I believe. There's a castle. Well, maybe not. There's the castle. Is that a good castle position? I can't even tell. I don't think not I like it too much. Really? I like it later for, once again for like trade, maybe, because you can't wall yeah. that. But right now, no. I, I mean, when he was placing this castle, I don't think a Carnage realized that he was about his eco was about to get destroyed. This is a lot of pressure. And yeah. all of Carnage's gold is in one tiny spot. So if... If this army breaks through to that gold, Carnage is going to lose a lot of villagers or be idle for a very long time. Yeah, and Imps, looks no like Nipperon is going to be first who's, who's up. up first? Lamarcus could also buy right now. I mean, most of the Big Bang team is about to click in. All three of them. Oh, it's going to be so bad for Carnage. And the thing is, I think Carnage overboomed a tiny bit here. I think prioritizing Imp was going to be more important than 128 villagers. And I know he was pressured to keep making villagers, keep making camels and everything, but I think skip some villagers, try to get in, because this Gurjaras gets such a huge difference with imp upgrades. Yeah, and Nezar first to click, Lamarcus right behind him, Miparun, any moment. Carnage is still not close, Carnage has to queue up more scouts. This is going to be three to none imp. This, that's Kinda could be game. Are there castles ready? Yeah, there's a castle for Marcus, but he's just kind of expanding with his castles. I think the only thing that saves this if Carnage stops producing camels, cancels his queue, and clicks him right now, because that's going to be a really awkward a couple of minutes for his team. Otherwise, oh, I've never seen this. Oh. All three on the way to Imp. All three getting coinage on the way up. Wait. One oh, of them yeah. It. Okay. One of them canceled. Okay. But all three were at one point. You know. So, get uh -huh. this. So, you know how you guys made coinage three minutes, right? Yeah. 
But you know how a lot of civs, like Bohemians and Vietnamese, Vietnamese have, I think, 100% faster research in ecotechs, which normally coin industry would count as an ecotech. But because the map hard codes co coinage into it, the 100% for oh, or sorry for Vietnamese does not affect the coin the speed of the, at which it researches. Hmm. But Bohemians that have an 80% faster, I think, a market text, that one is affected, and that one does make it, a, you know, a minute and 40 seconds or whatever it comes out it to. It does. Yeah. Wait. I. What maybe tech... I'm sharing this too early, but uh... <laughs> what tech allows them to do that? Is it a team bonus? Or it's, just... it's, a, it's a team bonus, I believe. It's either team bonus or I believe it's a team bonus or it's a Sith oh bonus. Somebody gosh. from chat, look it up. We're gonna focus on the fights, but somebody <laughs> with uh, with more time than than us. Wow, that's and the reason interesting. and the reason I don't mind sharing this because I think if you have a strat for sling, I don't think a minute or you know is gonna make that huge of a difference. But, you know, it's still something to think about. Yeah. If you were planning to do this with Vietnamese, just know that you probably can't, because this is the one their uh, bonus does not apply here. I'd actually be interested oh. to see someone try the sling even without the sped up time. Like, maybe they hit Castle Age, click it right away, and then just flood a bunch of resources once it's in. It'd be a little bit late. Might still. But all these maps are so aggressive that it's so hard. Okay, there's a big fight right. on the right side right now between Nazar and Raid. Actually, it's funny. Uh, Nazar is actually kind of bullying Raid a little bit here. Getting some Very revenge. similar Cav Archer numbers. He's getting revenge. But once chemistry, here. yeah, yeah, chemistry and all the upgrades coming in, so there's really no way that he can get challenged up there, despite having a much worse uh, eco than Raid. Where is Raid's rest of his Cav Archers? Are they all just in one group? Yeah, in the middle. I think they are. He just needs imp. Like, the, okay, so these 55 Cav Archers. As soon as the 53 camels from uh, from Hindustanis come in, there's nothing they can do right now. Yeah, and heavy camel is 20 seconds. Heavy camel away. coming in. I wish, I wish Puran was not at home right now. Puran could do so oh, much damage he, in a, in a brief is window. Why he at home right now? I don't understand that. That there's is nothing to even ridiculous. Right now. So he's got this power spike. And he's gonna yeah, get there, what are we... and they're gonna be getting their imp stuff very soon. What are we hunting here? I mean, truth be told, that they're so far ahead that maybe they're fine anyway. But if you let Carnage get to his own insane mass of camel riders with all the upgrades, that's going to be on par with with Hindustanis, if not right. better. And Nazar, even on the left, being a big nuisance. I feel like Magyars is starting to realize that... Uh, or is going to realize very soon that these uh, knights are going to have a bad time Pulemos. I mean, eventually, maybe Heavy CA was an idea, but once the uh, once the 53 camels finally come in and they are on their way, this gold is going to get raided. Yeah, actually, camel, no these, gold, just those straight for TC. Massive camels, yeah, right on the TC. That thing died this in a millisecond. This might not be GG yet, but it's going to really hurt. This is basically the precursor to the GG. Yeah, these things are barely getting hurt. He's going to preserve this the is... numbers and maybe group up with his allies. And, okay, so the raid thing, I love what raid did. This is kind of a little bit of a uh, bluff. Because, honestly, these camels from Pure could just eat everything that raid has. Even if they do? hide in the corner. What did raid well, do? He walked, well, he walked in there without Bracer and without any of his imp techs. Oh. You know, to defend against the camels. And, honestly, I think Pure just didn't realize because Pure thinks that everybody has a awesome eco as he does now raid's not looking he's losing a lot okay yeah but imagine up. how many more he'd lose if 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 all of these were uh were still not heavy ca and um, right parthian everything's in now yeah and just just to make sure you i'm at 4452 right now yep okay cool just making sure because parthian came in that second when i said that everything yeah, else was yeah. in parthian just get big fight on the left side Nezar, Lamarcus, and uh, Pure, and just have complete control of the map at this point. And what do Magyars really do here? There's like camels that giga counter your cav. Do they just need to go like Halb? I'm I'm saying like Halb actually 
the only reason that you need camel archers, I or sorry, not camel archers, but um, cav yeah. archers, is for the uh, if you're not magyars, it's for the help. But nobody's gonna make help when there's cav archers on the field. So it's kind of a weird situation where the the heavy CA kind of get get countered by everything on the on the field right now. Yeah, and you unless you can't go, you can't go help. You can't go cav archers. You can't go paladins. What what do you do here if you're? Is the meta animals? here just uh, six Hindustanis? Just like, like it, it, is, I, is that the ideal comp for this map? Just six <laughs> players going Hindustanis and spamming camels and nothing else at each other? It's just age of camels. Camelot. <laughs> age of camels. For sure. Age of Camelot. Okay, uh, I haven't seen any unique tags or which unique tags came in for Carnage yet, or how how close he is to. Uh, getting the plus four for the good jars caravan coming in okay I don't caravan. think carnage is gonna be able to to trade I think they have bigger priorities right now I and think this you is have this to fight. trickle some in behind this even if it's not a lot you have to start doing it or you just run out of gold and die I suppose I mean both both teams kind of have pretty safe trade lines and by pretty safe I mean with enough castles on the way. Yeah, I especially like the blue and the green all over the place on the left. The castles non-stop from Lamarcus, one after another after Ooh. another. He Carnage, has... I don't think you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't think you can take, be taking this fight. Like, why? We need we need to wait at least for Cavalier. Why take this early? We're not actually. This isn't their army is not so, hurting us uphill. Yeah. yeah, it's like a a force because you don't want to lose stuff. But you just gotta let buildings die. You gotta let stuff go down, and we're wait, not even there. The first shrub is out. There's nothing even dying. You just yeah, cap the hill. <laughs> like sure. there's no reason to take a fight before your teammate gets all his upgrades. I think it's just like you're feeling that you have to be doing something. Where sometimes you don't. That, that's not necessarily true. And Lamarcus on the right, in the middle of this, while Raid just rotated left. Oh, this is well. I mean, is, are those camel archers really going to do that much? I guess they are if they walk past the castle and they walk into the eco of raid. That maybe right. And it's not like raid can do anything. Okay. I mean, there's not no even there's trade no there. Trade it's just the, ra the raid all has is uh, heavy CA, and there's going to be no counter to these uh, to these camel archer because the only only player right now that can wipe these is Carnage. And yeah, there's a massive. And Carnage on the is left. busy. <laughs> yeah. Carnage looks pretty busy with what he's doing, and that seems very important. So the these just get camel archers, man. Yeah, I mean, we kind of we kind of figured that one out. It's, it feels like this is just a camel age of camel situation where like, any unit that's not a camel that's made is a mistake. I think what he needs is paladin and help. Like they need to be kind of together. So when the camels are fighting the paladin, at least some help are kind of poking them. The paladin tank the Ooh. arrows of the have archers hear, hear me out here instead of paladin mm -hmm. how about we go um since there's already shavamsha riders out there anyway just only go help only help yeah only help because oh, yeah, there's already as, lo as long as carnage keeps making those shavamsha riders and i know he's not gonna be there to make him for much longer but assuming that uh there were there were shavamsha riders everywhere that were taking all the shots from the uh the Berber camel archers, perhaps the the Halps could actually do something. I right. don't know. It would be tough. Because right now, Cavalier, they just seem worthless. He probably won't even get Paladin. I would not waste a dime on it. So, without checking, guess how many kills these uh, this these fifty three camel archers have in the back of oh, everybody's base? Shoot, I actually had them selected when you said that. <laughs> oh, okay. Like well, it's... yeah, you definitely. You definitely saw it. You saw the number. Yeah, so I can't guess because I saw 69 That's when you funny. said that. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I mean, they've been just so annoying. And it's funny because only now can they be uh, chased out since before that Carnage was stuck dealing with the left side. And as soon as Carnage leaves, uh, the castles are gonna from him are going to start dying. Yeah, I think now you just... I, I know I say this a lot, but you need some siege ramps behind... What's happening here? Mm, siege rams. From like maybe the Han. From, from who? Okay. From, on okay, the right. The I'd like some there. on the okay, right. I see. It just it gets really annoying Ooh. and panicky. They're they're still I tank a lot it. too. Yeah. 
I could see it. Honestly, okay, Halb and Seed Ram, but uh, the problem is that, yeah, Halb and Seed Ram, would that be, would that be so ridiculous? I'm, I guess they're like, the armies are so close, they're trying to get the edge on the other, but it seems like adding that in would really change what's happening here. That is a very stacked group of 28 uh, Camel Archers. Score is looking worse and worse. Uh, so this is a hard one, Titanic, because I think Mangri Dyer still have a huge DPS advantage. Over the Camel Archers? Yeah, against just basically everything. So I still think it's going to be Mangri Dyer, at least in my, in my book. If you had equal numbers, like 60 Mangri Dyer would do a lot more than the 60 Camel Archers. And the drill? only trick is you you have to defend the hell out of those 60 Mangri Dyer because, to make sure they never meet the 60 Camel Archers. Right. But I would personally very much prefer the 60 Manga die. I think if you go like number, like DPS wise, I think it would be Whoa. just about double or Tards something similar. Tards queued up in the castle on the left of Lamarcus. Is that a mistake? No, it's, it's to bust the wall. Oh, they're, they're okay, queued okay. on the wall. They want to get into I love it, trade. yeah. Well, it's, it doesn't seem like it's going to matter. I think uh, the wall is going to go down anyway. And I, yeah, I, been... I think the GG is called once the camel archers get into the trade. Yeah, old refugees is going to go down. Game one, they've never been behind in a set. I think they've been tied. This will be the first time they're really tested. Maybe they're uh, they're good from behind. Yeah, their their trade definitely is not. Um, gates going desperation gates. Uh, those were pretty good desperation gates. I did not expect that to even oh, kind of work. It's just a matter of time. I think they just bought themselves five more minutes, though. It's just the ma the trade numbers are not going to be there. Right. Well, as I say this, there's 30 trade for Carnage. He has I mean, to reroute it because it's just going into yeah, the Yeah, it's still going Maybe to the last market. market deletion. He just caught that one. Well, I actually think it's his own market screwing himself oh. over because they're going to the market furthest away. You're right. The furthest point in all his trade. Yeah. One after another, just dying. And even Polemos trades going there, they need that deleted. These uh, these Carnage Gates actually might be hurting him at this point. It's hard to tell. Maybe you delete some of these forward gates while you're taking this fight. Wait, where did these Polemos... How are these Polemos trade cards where are they going okay i see what happened because carnage tried to start building the gate and because of this this gate that he started building south of his castle the trade cards from his teammates have been going around as well yeah but this is completely over help coming in actually from palemos uh but yeah they're trying to get they... through and they're going right into the army man it's painful to watch i i honestly think so i think sling your teammate here had potential I there was definitely times where I feel like Raid and Carnage were close to pop capped and I think might have been able to sling Polemos so that he could get Halb a little bit quicker. Not sure if that would have saved him enough, but it seemed like he was always a little bit behind. It feels like Berbers are just really good on this map, but it's same with Hendistani's Kadraras too, you said all these camel sieves. Camels only. Anything that's not a camel is just not doing well. The Cav Archers are okay, but they're not even that good. I think we're going to see a G. Yep. Yeah, There's there the it GG. is. Produced. Wow. Big bang. Taking game Well played, one. well played. Super well played. Nazar had 80 eco KD. Lamarcus had 90. And Mipper run 50 and 0. 54 and 0. Wow. 54 and 0. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he did not lose a vill through all of that somehow. Wait, 0 and 90. Wow, that's that's I think that's almost even more shocking. But I suppose it makes sense cuz he was always on the back foot and having to run around everywhere. Yeah, it all started I think it was, that first yeah. TC, then one was denied. He put one back. I think he called it. He maybe boomed a little too quick, but it evened out regardless and it just seemed like big bang had better stuff better units better sifts in the end it was a decent it was a good showing from both teams to be honest um there's not much that 
was a glaring mistake. I honestly thought Nezar was going to be in trouble after the, the opening, but he even got value out of those archers that I thought were going to be useless. He definitely got his revenge on Raid, too. You could see at one point he just wanted to take it to Raid. It's like, you killed my Vils? Well, I'm going to kill a lot of yours. Are you going to do an MVP uh, poll for that game? Yeah, why not? Let's see. MVP poll, guys. Nazar. I spelt it wrong, but you guys will know which one he is. Okay, I spelt them all wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me, but <laughs> well, if you spelled them all wrong, you know it's like it's kind of it's kind of evens out. Yeah, I guess I got Mipperin right. Lamar, uh, Lam oh wait, did I get Lamarcus right? I'm just tripping. I can't read. Lamarcus is good. It's just Nazar. <laughs> With the spelling error. So the home map of. Old refs is Lowland. So I'll, I assume that's what game two will be is Lowland. Right, I'm getting there right now. Looks like it's a two way tie for MVP at the moment. But that's. This is the first time old refugees are down. I've been calling them the tournament favorites, but. That's all changing today. At least so far. They may have a big bounce back. This is more of like an Arabia style map. Just want to wait for that final vote to get in. I actually needed two minutes. I guess I'll just get it in a sec. Who was Hindustani's that game? Yeah, in the green, Mipuran. Mipuran. That sounds better. Yeah, I finally got Puma down. Puma. Almost like Puma, but Puma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fine. I butcher these names until the end of the tournament. Let's see, looks like Lamarcus got the um, MVP. I just need to throw that in real quick so I don't lose it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, I'm at two minutes. Yep, let me know. Count us down. Three, two, one, go. Wait, Titanic Lord, you're saying he's he was C tier? Lamarcus was C tier. Lamarcus was? Uh, that's what that's what uh Sean. Okay, well let's saying. let's keep an eye on that this game. Um Oh Mipurin, okay, okay. Well yeah, okay. I well oh, Mipurin. so Mipurin is C tier C tier. Oh, that's, apparently. that's right. I think because they have the strong okay. flanks with the weaker pocket. I'm pretty sure that's how this team runs. I guess And I really like that. Yeah. Scout lame coming out boar lame coming in from the very second. And we know this is not a re because we're casting a wreck. Yeah. Most we most likely know it's not a re. There may have already that been a re. So quick. I mean, there would wow. this would definitely be the time to re if you had a chance, but it's a used it. wonder. Did he know? Do you even know that you got lame though? That's that's the problem. A lot of these times, I actually did not see if that was if he saw the lame. It doesn't seem like he really reacted to the lame, so there's a good chance you didn't see it happen. And Carnage is pinging his way. Maybe your boar's over there. Yeah. Okay. So he has no idea he got lamed. A hundred percent. It just makes Guys, sense. So this I is unfortunate. Boar. He's like, bro, it's right there in that yeah. darkness. He's Bug map. Look. Let's re. Wow. 
He got lamed and didn't even and- know it. I don't mind it. Now that laming is actually harder to do, I'm okay. not a fan of having Reese because it robs you for doing. Something yeah, that's what I'm really saying, man. I, I I've been saying this. I was I'm always right. That's 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 what you have to realize <laughs> about tournament settings. Anyway, Lamarcus is not going 18, 18 16 pop because he made a mill. I was but a fan of Reese totally when um, laming was just normal laming. Now that it's hard, it's like, no, dude, I don't want the person yeah. robbed of what they just did. It's much harder now, like. They deserve it. Yeah. Almost. And I hate laming, but it's hard to do. You kind of deserve it when you finally get it. Well, Marcus is Khmer 16 pop feudal coming. Um, yeah, it's it's not. We we just. We, I mean, he, when Titanic Lord said this, this was yeah. before Lamarcus put down a mill. I mean, so Why? is there potential for for yeah. wait? No, this is this is 18 pop scouts for Lamarcus's well, flank. Scouts flank. I'm guessing. Let him or cook. Or he got a mill because he's Khmer. And has that doesn't wood. make that much sense. And it's he didn't like, need the mill. I know. He's got plenty of food. He's pushing another Ibex. I mean, if the goal was quick scouts, I think you don't even bother with the mill and just push all the stuff in and then uh, you know, only have one on wood initially. And then add a lot more later. I don't know. The, the, these these builds confuse me, but it's clear it's clear that Lamarcus is definitely going for flank scouts. So we'll probably see double scouts. It seems like from Purin and Lamarcus. Yeah, and Nazar. I'm worried about Polemos and the South. You got lane. Uh, the fact you're against a 2400. Good. Yeah. Luck. And it's gonna get worse and worse. I mean, he did make it up to to feudal at twenty one pop, which is which is good because if he didn't make it up, yeah, it was gonna get even worse. Yeah, and he does know he's it's... against raid Titanic because they scouted Polemos in the south. If they assume, yeah, they know Carnage's pocket. Yeah, they know the positions. So. The one good thing that I say that Lamarcus has going for him is that his map is pretty easy to wall. If he was going as scouts against archers, I mean, there's no Saracens on the map, so it wouldn't be hard for him to delay archers coming into his base for a while. Yeah, I still think a little late on the barracks from Raid. Just barely, but it is slightly late. He's Dravidians. He's probably going to drop two ranges immediately. Maybe. So, Mipuron definitely going to scouts, but screwed up his build just a little bit. Had one twenty-seven seconds of idle TC time, which I know nobody likes to be. Nobody likes an idle TC nanny, but I'm telling you guys, like if it's a nineteen pop build, there's really I and mean, you're going to scouts. I don't think there's a lot of excuse for that, especially when you didn't have to lame or get lamed. Yeah. 19's much easier, especially for scouts of all things. I agree. Yeah, and, and I don't think he even has double bit hacks yet, or does he? Uh, yeah, never mind, he does. He, I, okay. I take that back. So Mipuron is getting a, the horse collar. We'll see if he can actually afford scouts. Well, we'll see what the scout numbers look like. Maybe. So, what do you think? Where are the scouts going to go? I feel like the, the scouts look like they're going straight home, for raid. They're going to yeah. maybe go to pocket, but pocket's walling. So, it, the first scout from Lamarcus that came and got slapped by a by a spear, I feel like that probably taught that scout a lesson, and it's gonna teach some, it's tell some of his friends about the uh, the fact that you probably don't want to be, go to raid space from the start. Unfortunately, Carnage is gonna be fully walled, so I think as soon as these Lamarcus and Puran scouts see that Carnage is fully walled. They'll probably have to go back to raid. Yep. So they're trying to use this mobility. It's weird that Mipperun is just patrolling at home, not really sure where to go yet. Like. Yeah, I mean, it seems, it seems like a little bit of a common theme, but it's it's okay. It's not like he is missing out on any damage. I mean, he probably wants to be forward, but at the same time, they, it's not like he, this is... He could have been killing something that uh, he, he isn't. He might have been concerned where yellow is, too. Didn't want to be caught out with yellow hitting him mm. while he's gone. 
I suppose, I suppose. Lots of it names. turned out to be turned out to be accidentally not the bad move. Um, so these archers that are walking from Nezar, Very that good. just happen to not not get caught out by the yellow scouts, scouts by the Ar Carnage scouts. Yeah, and Lamarcus getting a kill on Raid. Raid's going forward. He could do some oh, big damage let's to Carnage go. too. I think Ray got a little bit too cocky in the back. He knew that scouts were out, and he, he knew that scouts were around there, but he figured, hey, I got enough spears. I'll be okay. And down goes I don't need to wall this early. It's too much of an investment. Okay, let's see if Nezar and Pjorn can break in. It doesn't seem like it. It's very annoying, though. The pocket almost lost the bill. Has to house wall. Oh, look at the raid from raid on uh, Lamarcus. This is oh, this is my awful. Goodness. This is honestly this is almost GG. And he's not remembering the house. Like, oh, he did remember the house. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I would have forgot about it. But that's there's too many too many men in that house. The last villager couldn't get in even if she wanted to. It would have absolutely been GG if it wasn't Kamer, but still big damage. Yeah, yeah. But this is still so bad. Four villagers down. Absolutely br brutal. I mean, Lamarcus did get two villagers on raid, so. It's not like it's a completely one-sided situation. And Lamarcus, I'm pretty sure, is just going to die if he's not going to wait for any upgrades. Oh, actually, he has scale barding. I didn't even notice that. That's a lot of scouts with scale barding. Yeah. Going to be a nice cleanup. Yeah, if it wasn't Khmer, this would be this would be over. But this is this is not horrible. No, the, I mean, the trap bad. at it's Carnage, not horrible. they're going to wipe this army. Yep. Oh, Jesus. I think they're going to. Yeah, they should absolutely wipe this army. Wow, what a trap again. Again, the scouts get stuck. Like, those scouts couldn't get out even if they wanted to. Yep. Especially how melee pathing is now. It's a lot harder to actually get by. Wow. Now, it's 96-97. Vill counts are very close. Slightly in favor of Big Bang. And Raid has... I feel like the archers resources tell a different story, though. Well... I keep thinking something like like one fight is gonna swing like swing it, but after all that, it looks like nobody is too far ahead. No, I agree. French Kittle says, "Go go go, old refugees." Well, they're down a game and they need to win if they want to go to game three. And they oh, are this, now. Uh... Heading this double point. is going to be hard to get walled. It's going to be hard to wall this out for uh, for Palemos. Yeah, Big we'll Bang see. is doing a good job of coordinating these attacks together. Old refugees have been kind of more separated. Mm, it's going to be so important that they get in, because if they don't get in, I'm pretty sure the, the archers from Palemos are going to be able to just sit on the edge. Yeah. Does that pass a wall? Okay, barely. Okay, so this is a really nice market wall. Meanwhile, the next group of raid archers are back looking for more villagers to snipe. They have spears this time. Really good pre really good tower coming up from love, Lamarcus ahead of time. Tower. It protects yeah, it protects wood, so much. Gold. I mean, unless Raid does a screw you move and just walks through the entire thing and kills everybody or tries to kill everybody on gold. He's gonna preserve I think that was a Probably a decent move as well, but let's see if uh, Raid actually gets caught out a second time because there are 12 scouts on the field for uh, yeah, for I, Lamarcus. The problem is they're all on the opposite side of the map. I would have preferred the meetup with Carnage at the pocket. Yeah, he did yeah, force, he did I suppose tower, so. But I mean, he was so close to his ally. That's a lot of walls from uh, from Green here. Now, Raid is Pretty going big investment. back home. I don't think he wants to lose his army as he clicks up. He knows That's definitely ahead. probably the right move. Yeah, and Lamarcus... Where are the 12 scouts? They're still far away. I, I like, love how Lamarcus doesn't panic. Like when I see, you know, sometimes when I see this many archers, uh, hey, Tia says Spencer's, your voice is a bit quiet. Okay, but that's because I changed everything. I think part of it is uh, maybe you were further away from the mic at some point. That might have been it. Anyway, too. I think that's... yeah, because I think right now you're pretty pretty good. Probably but anyway, was. my point was my point was that Lamarcus could have gone back with his scouts and panicked and tried to wipe a raid, 
but he didn't. And as I say, oh, this is a curse. What is this? This is such a curse. Lamarck is losing five scouts. <laughs> you did it again. Or losing <laughs> the Ray curse. Yeah, I was just I was saying how good he have a job he was doing for you know, not panicking and sending everything back. Yeah. Now that I think about it, the way that you curse these teams, maybe that's why the spring slapdown went the way it did. You kept saying, Meisel, <laughs> this is garbage. This isn't going to work. Yeah, kept the drush is never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys, uh, you, the way you win Spencer's tournament is just you get me to not believe in your team at all, and <laughs> it will consistently work. Yep, whatever team that you say is not going to win or do well, they will do well. Look at these armies from Nezar and Purin attacking Palemos Purple. Yeah, they keep coordinating together much better. That's what I'm liking about Big Bang right now. The teams seem very well matched. But the coordination is a bit better from Big Bang. Polemo's never finished that market. The second one. He doesn't want to finish it because he's still thinking that there might be potential to get 30 wood back. It's just a wall. A temporary wall that he may get rid of eventually. I hope you guys don't hear it. I hope the dog outside isn't too loud. I'll close the window if that's the case. It is it not my dog. Okay, that's that's how's, great. How's our audio, guys? Is it even now? I got the mic close. Be honest. I can make a slight adjustment. All right, gonna be uh, gonna be knights versus three armies together here. Knights get a little bit scary. They have to wait for Palemos to uh, to come in and bail them out. This is an awkward situation. You do not want to lose your stable if you're Carnage, but. Uh, they're just waiting for numbers. And at the same time, these archers from Nezar are now in trouble. And they I think they realize that. They're just trying to get damage. But where do these archers go from Nezar? I feel like... They need to do damage. Otherwise, I think they just wait till they get enough numbers. As Carnage and Palemos keep getting more and more. And I think eventually they just get surrounded. Because right now there's two TCs from Carnage that the archers cannot pass. And look at the woodline of Mipiron. Mipiron oh, during Jesus. this. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So yep. they might lose everything here. Cause, oh, I guess he's not even in that fight. That's actually the other scouts. Right. But still, he's kicked off Mipiron, a lot. Mipiron, unfortunately, he had to come home with his uh, knights. His eco is a little bit disaster. This is kind of a little bit of a one-on-one -one between the two. Huge fight in the front. Or sorry, a huge fight between Palemos and Nazar. Is he the one that's the C tier, Mipiron? Yeah, we believe so. It's kind of showing this case. game. Like it's, it's showing. I think it was showing last game as well a little bit. But the thing is, when your team, when your only job is to make uh, villagers, Hindustani villagers, and make camels, it's pretty. Easy. It's a lot easier. Yeah, it's it's a lot better, especially when you have your team helping you out and telling you what to send stuff. Yeah, I mean he's one TC. Yes, our... He's got a lot of knights, but. I don't see anything standing out. Oh, this this is a kind of a good space for a raid to hide in. It's but... very glitchy. There's only a few hitting him. He's gonna lose it. Yeah. All. I mean, I say it's good, but at the same time, it's actually not that great. It, the, the biggest thing is that all these knights are back home, and not um, together with Nezar, and in front. Nezar just denied six farms by walking in here. This is the majority of Carnage, Carnage's food eco. Yeah, and Carnage, as the uh, knight player, he really needs his food eco. Oh man, and he has ballistics. These bills are all doomed. Oh, this is so unfortunate. He's can uh, can Palemos save oh, any Palemos of these? Palemos is there, okay. Just in time, saves the bills. Several went down. Is this going to be a TO? It's looking decent for... Big Bang, because the damage done, they actually have more vills than Carnage uh, Mip Mipuron does because the damage made up for the booming from the TCs. Let's see how many vills he's lost. Lamarcus is going 18. for some cheeky raids. Lamarcus is going for some cheeky raid underneath raids TC. That's a weird sentence. Um, actually getting way more vills than I thought. It was like three or four that went down. Just walking underneath it. Yeah, and Raid had to react to help Carnage. Carnage lost 18 bills. So he'd be ahead, but...
Now the C-tier pocket is in the lead because of the teamwork and the flank play. Archers v Archers, it looks like uh, Blemos is in trouble. Thumbring coming in for Nezar. It's interesting. 30, thir uh -huh. 35 Archers to 8. Yeah, good luck with this fight. This is really bad. And it's this interesting is how well they're party. making double cab work. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is the meta for this map. I, it seems like... I think they're dead. It worked a lot better than I thought. Now this is so brutal. The, this TC does not go up from from Palemos. Palemos no. is just got absolutely out of this game. Nazar's this micro is now, so clean too. GG is, now is called. Too. GG it is was called. Absolutely over. It seemed like they were okay at first, a little bit, but despite the lame. I know that made it worse, but Nazar with thirty nine and zero eco KD. Had the lame. I, I don't think you can make an argument for anyone else getting MVP here. I don't care Absolutely. What, what his tier is. He I, played amazing. I think Titanic Lord brings up a good point. I think this is a way going double scouts is perhaps as a way to uh, keep scouts off the, uh, you know, to keep forward aggression, to keep to let the pocket have time to boom, I suppose, when you have a weaker pocket and inside. Yeah. Maybe and that was the idea. I'm a fan of the weaker player being the pocket almost because you can see what these flanks can do. Um, Nazar, these these high tier flanks can just destroy games. These 2,200 plus players. I mean, Sato, obviously, he can probably destroy wherever he plays, but him too. Um, there's another one I'm forgetting who it is. He's like a 23, 20. It was the game we casted and we didn't know the guy's ELO. And at the end, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. he's really good. Who was that? That was a really solid performance. I remember who you're talking about, but not what his name was. Yeah, I don't remember, but he, there's just some game wrecker flanks. Nazar's absolutely one of them. There's one other guy that's just insane. And I think he's a 2400 I, also. I feel like it's a cast. It's a very much a caster comment. Oh, you should put your weakest player in the middle. Or, oh, you should put your strongest player in the middle. Because... In some situations, in some teams, it works. Sometimes you get good cohesion between teams, and it's amazing. And other times, I mean, I, th I believe that that was our idea before, so we would place the weakest player in the middle, at least on the previous tournament. And it didn't um, really work? It didn't work. It didn't work as well. I would always mm. play flank. But at the same time, yeah, we're, we're changing it up. I think there's an argument for both, and I think it really depends on the team. Yeah, and it depends on anything. how good of a flank. Like, there's a lot of good flanks, but then there's these just game wrecker flanks like Nazar that if he's pocket, Mipperun's probably going to die hard. Yeah, flank, yeah, there's no way. And who knows? I don't think Mipperun can flank. I don't think he would have the impact that he's having on flank that we see here. Even though I'm sure he's a great pocket player also. But... The two Absolutely. oh old refugees, many I considered the favorite. Now I mean they just got pretty owned here by Big Bang. Maybe that's the top so dog. This is, this is a four zero now, right? Is that is that correct? What's that? Oh yes, Big Bang that's, is a that's four zero. A four zero. And but I'll, both of the both of the teams are through, right? I'm, I'm not yes. like, or should be through. They're both in. So this is pretty much just a seeding a seeding sort of. Uh, game absolutely whoever gets the better seed for future games in the round of 16. and i want to pull the brackets up what is the other two three oh teams i don't think they played or have been casted yet i'm trying to remember who the heck it is um we can take a look at that actually right now um so old refugees or big bang with the two oh Yeah, and the way these maps go, 
yeah, they looked good today. We, we've seen so much craziness. I want to see if they've actually dropped some games. I feel like they have. Um, I have that somewhere. Maybe it's stats. I used to have it on the main screen thing, but I thought it was just too many numbers having their record and their games won, game lost. Let's see. Teams. Okay. So, Big Bang. Team games played eight. They've won seven, and they've lost one. Who took a game off of them? Yeah, I guess I can look at the brackets right now and see. Um... Let me find them. Okay, they lost a game to show me the light. Lighty's team. Yeah, so... And I think that was actually a really close set. And what is Lighty's team's record? Um, here, I'll actually put the standings on the stream. So, right now, Big Bang, 4-0. Old Refugee still three and one near the top. Pink Potatoes three and one. Beatless three and one. There's the Pathfinders and Fruits and Friends tomorrow. So we don't get to know who the other 4-0 is until tomorrow morning. I'll definitely cast that live. Now. <laughs> okay, so. It's a little more than that because it, they get the one seed. They get the what should be the best record to go through the knockout stage to the end. And the higher seed wins the sieve draft throughout the knockout stage. The, the coin toss. So. Yes. Yep. I like it. Yeah. Oh, this stupid. Okay, you know what? It, this is so dumb. It's the Discord. Why does it do this? I had to fix it for that channel, and then it was working in the casting one. But it's not worth. Oh my! This is this is a headache. I change one thing, and it works somewhere, and it breaks somewhere else. I can fix it. Yeah, I... <laughs> right. Fixed it here. Oh, on that one. Thank you so much for those for those uh, amazing games. Yeah, thanks for casting, Ray. Always a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. I hope there's more good ones to come. I'll yeah. catch you guys later. Thanks for having me. Bye. Yep. See ya. Okay, so it appears to break a lot. He wanted to know who the two and two teams were. I guess there's not a lot right now because not everything's in. Right now it's PMC Beethoven. And that's it. Apparently. Um, the Heffalumps set with Ray has not been casted yet. Surprise at the quality of games every time. Yeah. One second, I'll BRB. Okay, and it sounds like Ray's going to check out a really cool tournament. It's like live coaching, and they can pause throughout the set. It's like two lower ELOs, 1200s, and the coach can like pause and talk to them throughout the match. I don't know what it's called, but I thought it's a really cool idea. It's like two 1800 coaches during the game, backseating them 
while the game is happening. But we got more games on the menu. Let me take a look what's in the replays channel. I guess I'll just keep rolling with it. Sean, I, I know I said I wanted to watch some TV. I do want to kick back and watch some TV at some point and have some other people cast, but let's just keep it rolling. I do need a caster. I can fly solo, but if somebody wants to cast, Sean or whoever, let me know. Somebody, I'm going to get the replays in right now. It's frustrating that chat breaks. So, okay, Sean, you want to play AoE? I, I get it. The next set will be, I think it's the Leaf Man set. Standby archers regrouping against Blades Angels. This is the last one I can do of the day. I think there's even Show Me the Light versus the Three Westland. Um, I have to go to work after this set, so I'm going to get this one in. And that'll wrap it up. So. Oh, I didn't realize. My stream is showing everything in the world right now. Okay. Let's get this updated. Man, what a sick tournament. These maps have been amazing. They're a different theme. They're sort of similar, but they definitely feel different every time. There were some complaints early on that these would all just be totally late game boom fest and they're anything but that. Good luck booming. The team that booms is usually doomed. And that has been the case throughout the tournament. We're never like, oh, why are they going futile? Why aren't they booming? Nah, that's how to die. Okay, I'm gonna get the matchup plugged in. Openers, of course, Frozen Cove. Kawazan and Acclivity are the maps. I'll get those in right now. So, the names are wrong. They'll be fixed very shortly. Activities in. Okay, on the left. All right. I think I'm flying solo YOLO. Unless Sieg's around. These are two teams that are two and one, if I'm not mistaken. Standby Archers regrouping with Disaster, Edition, Leaf Man, and the Ant Man. Rito as their sub. And Blades Angels, which I would not ever count out the way this team is played. I don't care if their tier says 11 points, I think they're far better than that. They're not broken by any means because they've been losing games and sets. But here we are. Let me update the stream info actually. So we have Blade. Angels versus Standby Archers 
Regrouping. What's up, kid or waiters? Chewing on my quartz. All right. I got the replays. Let's get into it. Did I brush the stats? Yes, I did. Okay. How dare you go play Age, Titanic Lord? Nah. I actually haven't played in a while. I, I love the game. I just haven't had that much free time to actually play some AoE. Haven't played since the new update. And I hear it's very easy to roll back. So Ray will help me out with like the stomp set. We'll get that casted. I don't want to roll back until like all these sets and tomorrow's set are in though. Okay. Game one. Stand by. Archers regrouping. Blade, oh, not bald. Blades, angels. All right, we're going to fast forward just a smidge. So, Cumins for Blades Angels. Vietnamese and Bohemians. I think that is some sick civs for this map. In the south, we have the Spanish, which is also great, but I would take Cumins any day. I don't care how the teams are rated. Khmer for Disaster and Mongols for Leaf Man. So both teams, I didn't really fully look at the draft of what was banned. But Mongols and Kumin slipped through. That's a that's a big surprise. It's possible both teams just banned garbage. And picked all the good stuff. You want out, Jax? I gotta let my cat out. And we're back. All right, what did I miss? Leaf man getting his boar. Gonna fast forward a little bit. Wow, that was all the sheep at once. He hadn't found them until just now. Now I am 2K has his sheep. That is blade. In fact, I don't like that better. We'll just rename him Blade. Walls are coming up. The Kumin is going to be booming. He went 20 up. I assume it's just right into a TC. Could be defensive archers even. From, um, well, he's got a mill. Maybe not. Both of them have mills. So it looks like scouts will be the play. Disaster edition is up. He wants scouts. Leafman's going to take stone, so I, he's planning on getting into conks. And the Ant-Man... The Ant-Man did an 18 up. So immediate stable, scouts. It's going to be scouts and scouts versus, I assume, scouts and scouts. But where's the barracks for Blade? Maybe not. Are they just walling? The Kumin walls?
This is just Giga Walls. We'll see if this pays off. I don't know, chat. What do you... Have we ever seen just straight cumin boom with walls? It could work. I mean, cumin walls are slightly stronger. I don't know. I prefer some kind of archers or scouts opening just to protect the cumin or pressure the other side. So you can have a cleaner build. But if it's just scouts, this could actually work. If there's no archers and it's just double scout play, Blades Angels could really get away with this here. But right away, Vil going down for Cursed Wind. And he doesn't even have a barracks. I don't think any of them have a barracks. So there's scouts running around. A barracks now going up. A panic one. But double scouts with no military. That's not fun to fight. The range now coming up for Art Snoop. Leafman is probably going to click right to castle and when he hits feudal. And Leafman can do, like, these wonky things pretty well. I don't think standard archer flank is his biggest strength. But I've seen him do, like, weird stuff. Towers. What's that? Um, I don't know. Mobile units. Conks. Arambai. He's done quite well with those from what I've seen in games. Or I've played him in the past. Team games. And the Market Blacksmith coming up for Blade. House is res. He's going to click. He's going castle. With only 7 seconds idle. Blade is safe and going up. The scouts will do nothing here. The Kuman though. I think he could lose more bills right now. All over his wood line. I mean, how, how valuable is the Kuman Boom if you're just losing bills constantly? Four vills down. Arts Noob losing a vill. Another. Nope. Actually, the block is in. Okay, the spear came in. But the Kumin Boom has been a little punished. It's still a Kumin Boom. Even a pressured one is decent. Although, is he going to lose more Vils? It's a lot of Vils. He can fight. This has been one of the more pressured Kumin builds we've seen, though. Constant pressuring the berries, the wood line, killing Vils. I still prefer the position because Kumins are amazing. And teams keep giving them to other teams. Now Leafman's going to drop a castle immediately. He kind of jumped the gun. He's got 10 seconds to wait still, so he's dancing. A little early. He could have mined more stone that whole time. And Blade is also up into two immediate TCs. So the Bohemian wants the boon. The Spanish wants conks. The cumin is doing cumin things. I mean, it's kind of interesting. A cumin boom, it's powerful, but what's the follow up to go along with it? Because they can hold it off. I guess there's, okay, if there's crossbows, that could work. But Blade is just prioritizing a boom behind this. So instead of going for the big power spike with all three players into kill, it feels like he just wants the boom. He was going to go for a back TC. I think the scouts did find him.
an arts noob is kind of the protector. I'd like this army to stop patrolling and come over here to the little hole. Everything else seems to be patched up. Blade. Going for a stone. I don't think he would go Hufnitza. It could just be for a castle, but we'll see. Maybe he wants to plan a castle drop, depending on how the Kumin push goes. And what's the res? Right now, the Kumin is about to click. He could probably click now if he had a market. He does not. He doesn't necessarily need a market. He'll be up very soon. All in all, I think it's a good Kumin time. He did lose those few bills. The Ant-Man's about to be up, so three out of three will be up for standby. Arts Noob clicked right when the Kumin did, so they got two minutes of two players not being in Castle. The Conks are coming out. They're already here. Ooh. This is going to hurt. Okay. Blade will get it up, but at what cost? This really hurts. Okay, Leaf Man's going to pull back. Blade lost. I guess it's not the end of the world. Three bills down. Got the castle up. It could have been a lot worse. He did a good little dance with his bills there to minimize the amount of damage that was done. And conks are so annoying. That's why I mean, Leafman is very good at this kind of stuff. Like I said, he's not the strongest archer flank. But he's a very good player at being annoying. He does a lot of different off-meta things. I'm not saying conks are off-meta. But just weird or different types of things. Leafman is actually really good at this type of stuff. That's his eco KD. He's killed four bills now. And we've seen the power of foot archers. If the Vietnamese keeps pumping these things, gets crossbows, and you get a Kumin flood behind this, is it going to be step lancers or is it going to be knights? Is the question. And it is Hussite wagons. Okay. So the plan is to do a big Castle Age push. Now, Hussites against Conks. I've never seen it. I know conks hit hard, but Hussites are tanky. I feel like they should be good against conks. Leafman just sniping bills. Right in the dome. Oh, that's annoying. Just gonna delay it. Not really. Leafman continuing to get his conch numbers up. Ballistics coming in for Arts Noob. I need to open the window. Fine here. It's kind of hot out there, too. Leafman continuing the Ville Massacre. 10 and 0. The value he's getting out of these conks right now. They only have a 10 Ville advantage with Kumins. And they have not gone forward. The Knights are starting to flood. There's some camels too mixed in. Dude, these conks are so annoying, and the Hussites are just too slow. They can kind of, like, shoot them, but Leafman just moves to the left. Pivots. He can kite these things all day. Castle on the back for Blade. Another hill going to go down. Oh, the juke. And more coming forward. 
they need to get on offense. The problem is castle on the front, castle on the front, castle on the front. The Ant-Man has been booming. Has almost the most fills in the game. Oh, the trap. These conks go down. Great play. There's still more, though. The main mass is still alive. And Leafman has killed 19 vills, so I didn't see all what happened during that trap, but he has killed tons. They have the vill lead because of him alone right now. And these conks... Gosh, these things are like gg -ing. Blades Angels. No answer for them right now. They're like kind of just reacting. They're not going forward at all, and it's because the conks are so annoying to all three players at the moment. Blades lost 16... Curse wins lost 12. Art is noob is now in line to lose Vils. It looks like he wants to get into Rattans. Disaster is up to Imp. Getting Bloodlines. Getting Heavy Plow. This could be a Khmer Night Flood. I don't think he has the eco for Elephants. They could come in later. Probably going to be Cavaliers. But so much military for Blades Angels, and the value is all... The conks are getting so much more value. It's just a lot of reacting to the conks. Which there's probably a new mass forming. And there is. They need to go forward. I agree. Blade, isn't... Aren't you one of them? I am 2k1. I'm pretty sure you're Blade. Yeah, you guys need to go forward. These foot archers need to go forward especially, but Cavalier now coming in. The foot archers feel bad at this point when one's up to imp. But we do see Imp coming in for Blade. We see Imp coming in for Cursed Swin. Bohemians are insanely good on a map like this. And the Conks are now done. So it looks like Leafman must want to try to get into... I don't know about switching to Paladin or something like that here. Which he may want to do. Here against Bohemians... I would have just kept making conks. Cavalier is now in for Disaster Edition. All that being said, it's pretty close overall. Yes, there's a Ville lead for standby. The Civs are really good. Kind of for both teams. You got Mongol late game. You got Spanish trade. You got Bohemians. Vietnamese can do so much. But they're beating the stable down. Right when Disaster's trying to mass up, they're killing his production. They're going to get these Vils, it looks like. Ballistics is in. Those Vils are dead. And here's a jump from the Cavaliers. These are only Castle Age crossbows. They're going to barely hurt these things. They're not with the camels. Although the pathing... Those archers are dead. Oh, and I didn't even realize Blade is pushing with the Hoopnitzas. Now... I feel like because these are Mangudai, they're actually probably pretty good against these things with the Siege bonus. Yeah, those things got melted. Blade gonna convert a Vill, possibly? It's actually a nice Vill to have. You can start outposting. Deletes it. 
and a castle going up for the Ant-Man. Securing the front. I don't actually like this castle because you already have one here, here, and here. I would have rather it been over here on the left, maybe. To help against stuff like this. That is a hole. Curse one's in. Well, if the pathing could... There we go. And Disaster Edition diving the TC. TC goes down immediately. And Paladin coming in for the Kumin. This is a win and you're in. Coinage coming in for the Ant-Man. What's his upgrades? Does he have Elite Man? I assume he doesn't. It's so expensive. He does have it. So he's got everything already. He's got Bracer. He's got ballistics. He's got chemistry, it looks like. I'm sure he has thumb ring. And here comes the Halb for Blade and the Bohemians. These Cavalier are also only good for so long. So you got to win hard, I think, if you're standby archers. But they continue to have a bill lead steadily. They continue to have a little bit more army, although the army seems to be flipping as we speak. Paladin fighting Cavalier in the back. The Hoof Nietzsches now have the Halbs with them. I mean, the Hoofs Hussites. It's 35 bills lost for Arts Noob. 36, 37, counting. Blade lost 52. But the Maggie die. Coming in to be annoying. Paladin are pretty... Oh, man. That thing has ballistics. That thing's operational. That plus came from the, the castle. That thing has ballistics. Oh, whoa. What is this party? Wow. Actually, smart of him to get the bills out. He's going to need some assistance. It's a lot of mangy die. And a massive cavalier from Leafman. So, elephants are coming in now. Okay, now the Chimera are looking a lot better. The cavalier do fall off, and he's getting into elephants. The super wall on the right, we'll look at that in a sec. Oh, and that castle from the Ant-Man to deny the other castle. That's a great castle. He may just have to abort that one. And look at this wall from Disaster Edition. I love it. You're securing so much map. You're making it safe. Your trade is going to love flourishing back there behind it. And then the push of the elephants 
Bohemian Hub are great, but red is kind of more on the left. Just seems like standby is seizing more of the map, although the military is kind of in favor of Blades Angels, but we got to take into account that there's elephants, which count a lot more than your normal unit. This TC is going to get eaten alive. Chimera elephants are quite fast, too. Speed up. Are you guys just dead? Didn't doesn't look over yet. But it doesn't look good either. Or at least Blades Angel looks great for standby. Okay, now it's actually kind of looking pretty bad. We're taking more and more map. How feel bad against Mangudai. Is Paladin going to loop around? Wow, the vision though. A million freaking castles going up for Ant-Man. Dude has three castles at home and he's building four forward. And the elephant mass is insane. You need your whole halb production from Blade going to the right, I think. Looks like he is doing that now. So meanwhile, on the left, you're going to get super pushed here. Hmm. Yeah, I it's, I thought you guys were going to turn this around, but it's looking worse and worse. We could speed up, Blade. You just don't want to see you die. You want to die quickly, not slowly. The push continues in the west. Elephants are now flooding up the middle. They just don't have an answer for this. Kamura actually looks really good here now. Well, that's awkward. And the trade is non-existent because they're so pressured. Meanwhile... Standby has trade behind this. They're pop cap to hell and back, pretty much. It's a hundred pop lead. And it's just continuing. Alright, if these get in, I'm gonna speed it up even more because. Okay. Yes, there's Bohemian Halb. Elephants are still. Oh, they're gonna die. That's weird. I didn't see a GG. Was that just a bug? Let me look at the chat in game. Is there no GG typed? I assume it's just a bug. Yeah. It is over. Wait, where did my screen go? What? Okay, I don't know why. How do you get it back? There we go. Brush the stats. Let's do a quick MVP poll. Since there's no rush. Ant, Disast, or Leaf. Who's your MVP? 
I think the conks early were massive. That's what kind of made the difference. If there's ever a sieve you want to have a chance against Cummins, I think conks are game wreckers. Mongols also very annoying, but the conks helped sort of set that up and stall out the Cummins power spike. But yeah, the Mongols on the left, the Khmer elephants on the right, Spanish trade. Nasty. Well, we're going to get game two in. The map will be... What is the map? Um, Blades Angels. It looks like it's going to be Kawazan. So... Hopefully Blade doesn't kill his own castle again. Ant-Man with the MVP. Congrats, Ant-Man. It's an important set. If um, Standby takes the next game... They are in the top cut, no matter what. Blades Angels will have to win. If they lose this set, they'll have to win next week and hope that the odds are in their favor based on the matches they have played. But let's get into game two. It's going to be Kawazan. I'd expect a bounce back from Blades Angels here. Like you said, they are in a 16-point team. They have to do some pretty special things to win, but it seems like they are capable of beating 16-point teams. Leafman, definitely not 1,800. Um, he looked great there with Conks, but if you play him... Standard meta archers, you will see that he is quite a bit weaker in that sense. But the weird stuff, he's great at it. I think even this map, he's probably better than standard meta archer maps like Arabia. I don't know if he's going forward for a lame. He may get a pig. He will get a pig. It's funny because he's like, where's the other one? I'm going to speed up just a little bit. I feel like this map has slightly slower start because the pawns. But the sieves, we got Koreans, Franks, Italians for standby. And we got Dravidians, Malay, Persians. For Blades Angels. And the Ant-Man. Was able to click. No, definitely not first. Um, the Persian was up first. Blades right behind him. Especially with the Malay. Quicker. Research time on. Going up an age. And we're going to see. What are we going to see? A rushed barracks because it was sort of forgotten. Followed by a stable. No surprise there. Persians are always great on a map like this. The extra res helps with the dock. And Rito is not quite up, but he's going to have a fire out before Art is noob. Maybe, it depends, I guess. He's going to go for his archery range first. I assume there will be a fire. 
Fixed score, thank you. Oh, this dock from Blade. That is a forward dock. He wants to kill the fish. Not only take this pond, he wants to kill this one and the fire coming out immediately. Now this Vil, is he gonna lame res? I don't know what it's doing at the moment. It's doing something. It might get caught out by this scout right now. But Blade and Cursed are there. This Phil is dead. But the fire is out regardless, and the fish of Leafman are going to go down. I think Leafman's definitely in trouble. He does have archers. And the scout going down. Leafman now making his own fires, but Blade has the upper hand right now on numbers with peaceful fish. The problem with fighting for this pond now is you don't have any food behind it once that fish and ship goes down. Leafman. I think he's gonna leave the fire in the dock. He's just asking for it to die if he doesn't. Ooh, TC got Leafman there. Fire came out. I don't like that. I would have rather it stayed in the dock. Now it's just dead. And look at that. A fishing ship coming out for Blade. You know, so he kind of has this. The minimal amount of fish, uh, fires to control the pond, but still get eco behind it. I love to see that. And there's also fire... Fights going, land fights in the north. Rito and Arts Noob. I think he wants to try to repair that. Oh, not gonna happen. And Kurt Swin taking big hits from the spear. I don't know what he's looking at. I okay, now it makes sense. So all his scouts go down because he's distracted at home. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And Leafman's still making these fires. I guess it's stalls Blade from being able to just straight boom on the water. Or fish the water effortlessly. Is he going to garrison it? I would garrison it. That makes no sense, but it's what happened. And Leafman gets a bill. The fish of uh, Arts Noob are going to go down now. As Rito gets the better end of this. Leafman continues the pressure. This is a... Quite annoying if you're, um, Blade. I think he's clicking up very soon, though. Maybe. Yep. Once the market's finished, he'll be able to buy it. Leafman is going to concede this, uh, dock. This is how you want to fight back. You mass up. But Rito and Ant-Man. What's the eco KDs? Kurtzman's lost two. Arts Noob's lost four. Blaze killed three and lost two. And Leafman kind of... I don't like going under this tower here.
but he is being annoying. And, gosh, I'm a little tired. I don't know why I start getting tired when I solo cast. It's just, what the heck. I think even if I'm just, like, watching a replay, it happens. Like a wreck analysis or something by myself. I need to wake up. Ooh, that galley is great. The Vils don't even realize they're not building. Poor Leaf Man. So he wanted to go forward and dock that pawn. Blade was right on top of it. The Scorpion's now out. These archers are done. He's on stone. So I think he wants to get siege. I think he wants to get a castle on Leaf Man. Very soon. Now, how is Art's noob doing? He's got 43 bills. Till is 43 with three boats. And the Ant Man booming away. Blade's the only one up on the other side. I think Ant Man is a problem. With that many TCs coming down. Knight's coming out. He is the Franks. Castle's just going right here. Not enough coffee. Yeah. Need to start adding music? That's what I need is some damn music. I, I wish there was a way. Actually, not wish. There is a way. Even if I just played it for myself. <laughs> Might be weird to cast with music in the background, though. That's what wakes me up is music. But tons of crap coming forward. Rito... Sending a bunch of archers. The knights are flooding across the map. I think Blade's Angels are in big trouble here, regardless of how well Blade is doing. Leaf Man is now castled. Your pocket is getting hurt. Knights are just flooding him from the Ant Man. Quick wall going up. There's still a hole right there. They kind of have the pawns, but they do not have control of the game. That's why I, I, I would have loved, obviously he didn't have the military to really do it. What's going on here? Is that fire somehow? No, it can't be trapped. It's just hitting the dock. I guess he doesn't give a crap. He's like, dude, the fish are gone. Kill them. Camels may eventually clear this up, but the res... There's no gold for Cursed Twin. He's just off gold. Not a lot of food. He could sell some. Sold food for gold. Sold... Yep. And the camels are now queued up. The flood continues from Ant-Man. And a big mass gonna join at the pocket, I think. I think this is over. Might not be. First, shoot the thing in front of them. Oh, fire, shoot the, yeah, the dock was blocking the damage. Yeah, I learned that from fishing ships. 
Fishing ships can block the fires from hitting other fires. Wow. I think when this mass... Well, it's not going to the pocket. Pocket's on 19 bills, though. Like, Curse one is dead. I, I don't blame them for leaving the pocket at this point. He's limping. They're going to link up at Blade. And I think we're going to see Standby Archers regrouping, if I'm not mistaken, moving to 3 and 1. And into the knockout stage. Still fighting for seeding, of course. A higher seed gets the choice of first or second in the draft. Which could really help them strategize when they know if they're going to want first or second pick. Their opponent doesn't know until the match is live. I think it could be a big deal. TC goes down. And we're going to see the GG. I'm going to fast forward. Because it is over. I think when this TC goes down, Blade probably calls it. Even before. Wow. I thought it would be a little more competitive. I think it was kind of close at some point. Both games. But. Ant Man 57 and 22 KD. Nineteen minute castle time. Not bad. APM's all that matters. Amen's the best. No. Just kidding. Let's get the poll in. All right. MVP. Ant. Rito. Leaf. And it looks like. I didn't even realize it. So how tired I am. JCP was playing last game, right? And they switched to Rito this game. Pretty sure that's what they did. JCP out. Rito in. But Blades Angels. Close to being eliminated. They still have a chance next week. It's worth playing because you may make it. I guess it's cool not knowing in a way. If you knew you were eliminated, you probably wouldn't really care. MVP votes. This is weird. Some of these are not. Oh, yeah, there it is. It had been a bit since we'd seen um, Kawazan. Leaf. Leaf Man with the MVP. I guess, you know, he, he did have a hard player. So, I'm a bit surprised, though. I thought um, the Ant-Man was crushing, especially that score. Unless um, MTE and Leafman have this thing where they always vote for each other. It's possible. Because I assume that was your vote. But I don't care. You can vote however you want. Congrats, Leafman, on the MVP. Both games, I think. The, especially game one. He did play really well in game one. Um, what do we got? Gosh, I'm like out of it. Can you see who voted for Leafman? Yeah, it was you. I saw. It shows me. <laughs> okay, I was kidding. I It doesn't tell me at all. I was trying to see if it was you. Okay. Just kidding. I was trying to be sneaky. K 
Tao was on. Leafman MVP. Or was it Ant-Man game one? Who who got MVP game one? What the heck? Did I click Ant-Man instead of Leafman? Or did you guys actually vote Ant-Man game one? Whatever. It's on the VOD. I can look back. Okay, gonna update the brackets. This is about it for the day. I know there's more games. Um, I will cast them when I have a co-caster, because... I don't know, man. I just... It's hard for me, uh... Sitting here talking to myself. Feels weird. Feels weird. Some people are good at it, though. T90 does this all day. Ant-Man and Leafman. Oh, okay. And then Ant-Man got it because he broke the tie. Okay. I got it right. So... Brackets. Standby archers with the 2-0. It's updated on the screen. The only game not played is the other two 3-0 teams tomorrow. Obviously, there's some not casted that I don't know the outcome of. And there's a couple of admin wins this week. I think Clan VL was missing the last two weeks. They are just maybe they're tapped out. I don't know. Um, Heffalumps on crack and stomp needs to be casted. Saint Hell unless New Birds. Wait, when did that? Maybe that was an admin win. I don't remember what the hell happened with that game. Honestly. Might have been today. Is that ever scheduled? Let me check the schedule. Where is St. Hell and Les Newberts? Interesting. I don't know what's going on with that one. in replays no i guess we'll have to look into that that one might be an admin win too that i'm not aware of i was pretty busy this week so i didn't really keep up with all the pre-game chats and stuff like that but a couple more i'm looking forward to tomorrow honestly two more three O teams we're going to see who will be facing off against big bang the other undefeated team. We'll know tomorrow. We got the DE Pathfinders who lost Finneth. So that definitely hurts them. And we have Fruits and Friends who have looked very strong. But I think Pathfinders are still strong enough for that to be competitive and to have a chance to win against Fruits. I think it's been an epic weekend of games, though. Yeah, we're getting hit by some 2 and O's. What is up, Lighty? Thank you for the raid. It's interesting timing because we are wrapping up today's stream, too. I hope you had a good stream, Lighty. I still got to cast your set. It hasn't... Um, It's going to be casted. It's a replay on the list. I have to go to work soon, but we were just looking at the top dog Civ, I mean team, um, Big Bang. They have played eight or maybe it's nine matches this tournament. The only one to take a game against Big Bang is your team. Show me the light. I think that was a close set too. They beat you guys 2-1. So the only undefeated team only lost was to your team lighty and yeah it just shows everyone everyone can die everyone can lose even though that team's undefeated they have dropped a game today they definitely looked really good against 
spoiler alert, against the old refugees. I guess if you're looking at this, you are seeing lots of spoilers, but I think most people know. Um, this is the second time this has happened to me, where I, a raid comes in, and it's right at the end when I gotta go to work or do something, but it is what it is. We will pay it forward. If you guys got anyone you recommend... Oh, someone already recommended who I raid, actually. Um, Ray sent me something. We're gonna... This is like a... I think a coaching backseat tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Coach Cast is here. Stellar Mish versus Tantron with T-West and Varian. I hope I said that right. As the backseaters? Possibly, unless this is something else, but... Let's get in there and check it out. GG's guys, it's been a great weekend. One more set tomorrow live and a few recordings to go for round four. And then we got the final round of the Swiss stage winter crown slap down. I'm your host Spencer with the AOE 2 underground. I'll see y'all later.